good evening everybody as a follow-up to our current um, series where we have so so far been considering the production or the design of a biodiesel production system a simplified one we have so far utilized trialing as our model our, um, sorry our model oil and methanol as our model trialing for clarity this trialing can be any oil right animal waste fats um, waste vegetable oil etc right now we duplicated the stream in order to facilitate a comparison of two reactor types in this case the rcstr which is rate based right so you need to have an, an understanding of or a knowledge of the kinetics of the reaction then the r1 which is the r storage reactor um, which essentially is not predictive you need to have a knowledge of the stoichiometry and indeed the conversions of the reactor the reactants right now having completed that reaction we had a production we now said okay to enhance the conversion of the the trial in reactants we could utilize a purge that facilitated the reactor a, a recycling rather of a fraction of the product stream back into the reactor right now the exit stream from the from the purge the so-called purge system was first depressurized given that the reaction occurred at high pressure or high temperature hence the definition of subcritical transesterification process right then we introduced um, a cooler to reduce the temperature of the exit stream after which we subjected that stream to a vaporization process right to facilitate the recovery of most of the methanol that was initially fed into the reactor right right now part of the the, the the heat that was recovered from the cooling process was utilized to enable the vaporization uh, of the methanol product or the methanol targets in this case right now the residual fractions were now cooled right and fed again to a duplicator now the residual fractions in this case were essentially residual methanol you had your glycerol you had your power diesel and your reactor traveling all in a mush right now the duplicator was employed in order to demonstrate um, the design methods for the approximate column and the more rigorous column right so the approximate was the c1 the more rigorous column was the c2 of course we're able to show also that you could utilize the design the design the results from c1 as a design values for the parameters in c2 to achieve equivalent um, purities of the strips right and that was where we stopped now we expected based on the differences in boiling points which again i will show you what i mean so based on this we expect that the bottoms will be largely the metal the metal oleates the fames biodiesel however you choose to call it and the unreacted trialing while the distillates will be the glycerol and any residual methanol, right? So we expect here to be largely the methanol. Um, just to show you what I mean, I'm right clicking and checking the results of the stream. Um, so we check out the mass fractions, right? So yeah, 96%. And we expect um, the bottoms to be largely what? Uh, uh, fames or reacted um, triolene and of course you still have glycerol which is not uh, which is not good and the biodiesel is a, it's, it's 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 an impurity right so we are going to have to separate the glycerol from the from the rest of the mixture right now we are going to demonstrate the utilization of a design specifications right so I've introduced a new column, okay, uh, which I call C3, right? We do not want to have to use this approximate method again, where we undertake the initial um, approximate method, get the results, and use the results as design parameters for the Morio Gross model. Rather, we are going to use design specifications to tell Aspen what we are trying to get. Then Aspen assesses the range which we are going to impose on the system and tells us if such a also the target is even possible right anyway so i'll demonstrate exactly what i mean so we click on the stream we reconnect to destination right 
um, introduce our material streams. Uh, so we can call this stream 12. Our bottom stream 13. Alright. Now we have to set this up. Now we do not know what this these parameters are, so I'm just using the same parameters that we specified previously. Um, now the point of this total, now I'll just go back to demonstrate what I mean. I'm going to delete stream 12 now, or reset it back in a moment. Now the total means that you are using a condenser that facilitates a complete condensation of the dislates in the dislate fraction. Right? In other words, what I mean is it's a complete liquid in the distillate. Now I choose this because it's the simplest um, approach. We do not know what fraction is a liquid, we do not know what fraction is, is, is a vapor, so we just take total. So to do that, you now have to specify when you set it up as a total condenser, right? I believe that is clear enough. So now for your distillate rate, um, yeah, we do not know what the distillate rate is, right? Um, but we can have an initial guess. So to have an initial guess, you come in here, you check out the feed stream, you right click, and you see what what you have as your product, right? So you check your molar flows. Now it is clear that you have very little methanol, right? Very little. Right, you have your ethyl oleates, or your films, and you have your trialing. Now, your distillate is likely going to be just the glycerol, right? And perhaps some other fractions will be distilled with the glycerol, but glycerol is your target, right? So, we can just round this up to say uh, 550. So, we can say your distillate in this case um, is 500 and 50 um, kilomole per hour, right? Your reflux ratio you can just use that, right? Um, so the stream, I can just uh, by default maybe stream three, just um, so initial guess, um, you can specify this as one atmosphere, right? Um, now that's that. Now to now specify our design specs you go to your left hand side of your interface right so your left hand side you go to c3 you see your specifications you click on the tab you see your setup you see which the setup is what you just did right but we want to specify our design like specifications right so we want to know what what we're trying to achieve so you go in there now we may choose whatever but in this case i'm saying we're trying to achieve complete recovery of our themes right so we say mass recovery of the themes the target is one right so one is 100 percent right uh so films the components is material oleates right and what stream will these films be in this should be in your bottom stream right again let me go back so you see your bottoms so we're saying all the films should be recovered in stream 13. that's what we're trying to achieve all the films recovered in stream 13 right and our feed stream of course is a stream that is being fed you know to the column with the stream line right now having specified that we need to specify what we are varying right so we can say we're varying in this case our reflux ratio right um so you come here reflux ratio from zero to a hundred for instance right now you can choose to introduce a step size the default is 0 0.1 which I think is okay for this particular work. Um, um, so you reinitialize, you run the simulation to access convergence, right? So there's an error. Um, now the error suggests that the design specification is not satisfied, right? So you come back here and check your specification summary and see what Aspen is suggesting is possible. Aspen is saying you can get as much as 99% mass recovery 
but not quite 100%. So you take what Aspen is suggesting and make it your new target, right? And right, initialize and try to assess if convergence is now achievable, right? So now we have achieved convergence, right? So having done that, you have achieved convergence, you have been able to recover um, as much as you can from your stream, you have been able to recover your fame product, right? So in this case, let's see. So we have, you see, it's mainly fames, about 94%, right? 94% um, fames, you still have on reactor trial in, which will be um, kind of mixed with the with the fames. Um, you have very little glycerol, right? So your glycerol stream, so we can just, for simplicity, we can call this your biodiesel stream. So biodiesel and call this your uh, glycerol right because the glycerol will still have some other impurities um, in there um, so have some other impurities in there that um, would have happened that would have joined the stream by virtue of the of the of the you see it's 92 Point five, but you still have some other minute fractions, right? So here yeah, it's largely about is so largely your glycerol, right? So we can say, for all intents and purposes, we have been able to get a biodiesel product, right? Separate it from glycerol, right? And um, yeah, we're more or less done, right? Now the next thing we will need to talk about is heat integration with respect to this because now you have so much heat being recovered from the system. Now you have your cooler here, right, which you could use, right, the heat exiting here could be used for instance to supply heat to, um, to, to produce um, steam. Right, that could be used to generate electricity for your process right so you need to have a target you know if you choose to use that you know you don't want to waste any energy right you may just choose to introduce um, I think we should discuss this in the next class so we consider heat integration opportunities right for this but for all intents and purposes we have our biodiesel products we have our glycerol and yeah can say we are 